Welcome to the Accomplish More podcast created specifically for the small business owner who doesn't think small. I'm your host, Gayla Scrivener. This show is where you'll learn practical ideas, hints, tips, and tricks to help you grow your small business where you can leverage your time and to accomplish more. Thank you for joining me for the very first episode of the Accomplish More podcast. I'm glad you're here. I'm Gayla Scrivener, and I thought that the perfect topic for our debut episode would be talking about what stops us from getting something started. You know, it's tough being a business owner, isn't it? We wear many hats, and just helping our customers or our clients is the tip of the iceberg, isn't it? We have so many other things we have to do. Like there's the bookkeeping, the purchasing, the errands, the networking, the meetings, the events, the marketing, the planning, the billing. Oh my, that's just the start. I'm sure we have a much longer list. And sometimes being an owner of a small business feels lonely. You've got to be a self-motivator, and it's up to you and only you to hold things together. You know, it, we place a lot on our shoulders, and it can be very overwhelming. And I know as a business owner, and if you're surrounded by folks that have the traditional day job, they don't necessarily get you. They don't understand your struggles. So so you get kind of lonely. And sometimes we get into a constant state of overwhelm, which leads to disorganization and feeling like we're spinning our wheels. We're we've we don't see the forest for the trees. We are doing all these little tasks and not stepping back and making a plan and um, working working toward a bigger goal. And um, we're not allowing us to start what we need to do for the overall goal. But I think... As entrepreneurs, our minds are just so full of what we want to do. And we spend maybe just a minute researching that one thing or that thing of the the minute that we want to do. Then we flitter off to something else and not really accomplishing anything. And most of the time, I think the biggest obstacle that gets in our way of starting something is staring right back at us in the mirror. We hold ourselves back. I often tell my teammates that um, I get in my own way. And, And that's so true. I think we all get in our own way because we are able to accomplish what we need to, but we're letting the start stop us. Now, I hear all the time people saying to me, oh, I just don't have time to do it, or I don't know how to do it, or I don't have enough money to do it. I probably have said some of these same phrases, but um, most, most of the time, those are simply excuses. If you really, really wanted to make something happen, you'll make it happen. You'll find the time. You'll find out how to do that thing, and you'll find the money to accomplish what you set out to accomplish. But there's something else that may stop us. It's a reason that we don't like to think about. Maybe sometimes we don't admit it, and maybe we're not even aware of it. But that's something is confidence. The lack of confidence in ourselves to make big things happen for ourselves really stops us from getting started. I'm going to 
give you an example of when I started my business, Scrivener Solutions. And I used to beat myself up for not getting started earlier. I'm over that now. And I use the experience as kind of um, just knowing what I'm going through now or challenges that I have that I'm dragging my feet. Ultimately, why am I dragging my feet? Is it because I really don't want to do it? And somebody else is like nudging me the way? Or is it something that I really, really want to do, but I am avoiding getting started because of the lack of confidence? So getting back to when I started Scrivener Solutions, and Scrivener Solutions is a virtual assistant company, and I started that out of um, a total career change. You see, I had been working in the medical field for about 20 years. In one capacity or another, I worked in the business office of various different medical specialties. I started out in an ophthalmologist office when I was just 19. I was going to college full time and working every afternoon, basically filing charts and calling and confirming appointments. It wasn't long um, after I started that my first real job, I guess you can say, um, that I was doing their medical billing. As the years passed and I worked my way up into management and operations positions for small offices and large organizations, and I became comfortable. It was stressful most of the time. I can't say it wasn't stressful most of the time, but it was stressful, but comfortable. It was comfortable because I knew what to expect. I had the experience and I had the connections to guide me. And with so many years in the industry, honestly, I became burnt out. I wanted something more and I wanted something different. And the idea of starting my own business was beginning to emerge, but I pushed it out of my mind. Here's what I did. I used the excuse that my daughter was still in school. I needed to do the responsible thing and to keep keep my job to pay the bills so that we can eat and have insurance and do some fun stuff, you know, all of that, you know, just keeping it together. I also convinced myself that I ne- I should feel guilty if I were doing any other job besides the company I was working for. I needed to be totally devoted to that company. I know. My gosh. It's crazy. I know. But I don't think I'm alone. Well, at least I've come across a few other people that have wrestled with guilt about moonlighting for their own business. But I shouldn't have let these concocted excuses stop me. Because that's what they were, excuses. And what? I can still be responsible and working a full-time job and doing something for myself and feel good about it. But I, I could have begun researching, you know, and setting up the business, planning, marketing, and, and gaining some clients just to get me headed toward being able to quit my day job and be a full-time business owner. But I didn't. It was comfortable, you know. I was not confident. I was not confident that the business was going to work. It was too risky. What, you know, I can't just leave uh, uh, what I was doing and And I had worked 20 years in the same industry. Sure, I'm opening up a virtual assistant company to use my skills that I've learned for the past 20 years, but I let myself get in my own way. Then I had an opportunity or a tragedy. It just depends on how you look at it. The company I was working for 
was going to close. I was in upper management, so I was tasked to help take on all the details of closing the company. So I knew well in advance um, a lot of things that were going on and had to plan for downsizing and closing. And this was a process. And it took at least a year. Um, and I honestly, it was a sad process. And it was hard to do what I had to do because it affected so many lives. And it was very stressful. And um, so I'm sure I was, I was not motivated to, to start something new because that guilt crept in because I should be focused on the company and helping um, everyone that I that I could transition out of their current job into um, and do my part in helping them transition into a new job. But I knew for at least a year that I was going to be without a job. And I knew but yet, in the first six months or so, I just concentrated on the tasks at hand. I let that stupid guilt creep up that I wasn't giving my 100% to the company if I began focusing on something for just me. But then again, I also contemplated at the time searching for another job in the medical field. And the only reason was because I knew the field. I was confident. And to completely change what I was going to do with my life was pretty scary. So I avoided getting started. By the end of the whole closing of that company, I had just had it. I was worn out, my nerves were thin, and I did not want to seek another job in the medical field. Now I do appreciate all the experience and all the people uh, that I had, um, you know, became friends with and, and learned from. And I, I'm so appreciative of the experience that I've gained over the last 20 years. But I needed a change. I wanted a whole lifestyle change, actually. And I wanted a lifestyle where I could travel and work wasn't dependent on where I was geographically. And basically, I wanted to be able to work from anywhere. And since by that time, my daughter had graduated high school and moved off to college to start her own life, my husband and I wanted to downsize and live a more simplified life and not have so much stuff. And we actually prepared ourselves to have a mobile lifestyle so that we could have the opportunity to work from anywhere. And, and so we, we basically sold everything that we had and moved into uh, our RV and, and traveled for part of that um, last year of working for that company because I had to be in different areas of the company to close different offices. And I used the experience of the company closing as an opportunity to jump off that ledge and start my own business. Now, even though I drug my feet in fully getting started until the that company I was working for completely closed, I did set some things in motion. In hindsight, I see that. I placed myself into a sink or swim situation. You see, when I downsized, my husband and I downsized, and living in a small space, a house on wheels, where we could work from anywhere, that gave me the taste is like, you know, I want to be able to develop a job, a lifestyle where I can work from anywhere. How do I do that? I can't do that in a medical office. So I don't like being a would have, could have, should have type person. So I recognize 
that I was the only one stopping me from getting started sooner. And I look back on that experience as really opening up my eyes of being able to have more traction with my business and building my confidence within the new business while still earning a steady paycheck. Now, I do wish I would have gotten started sooner, but I know that the only thing stopping me was me. And I try not to dwell on it. I've beat myself up on it plenty, but it was a good experience to reflect on as a lesson. And I look back on the experience to help me with current things that I would like to do, but recognize that something's holding me back. So don't let the start stop you. Have you ever let the fear of technology stop you? I've met several where it has. In the digital age that we're in, standard marketing tools are are just a necessity like a website, social media, blogging, whether it's written, audio, or video, an email. It's just a standard. And for many, it's overwhelming to even know where to begin and you feel bad that everything isn't in place and you feel you can't do it, nor can you afford help to get it done. And heck, it's overwhelming to understand how it all fits together. Now, I, I like technology and I'll start poking around and, and learning different programs and, and different um, systems. I, I just, I love it. But that's not always the case for everyone. And I, I take it for granted that everybody is as comfortable with, with the computer as, as I am. That's not the case. I work with really smart uh, business owners that they just don't have the confidence where the technology comes into play. And so that stops them from getting their website going. That stops them from doing their social media marketing. And that stops them from from email marketing. All of this, they they know they need to do it. They know and they're learning the the understanding and the importance, but they don't understand how it fits together and most importantly, they don't know what buttons to push. And I have found myself just sitting with them and consulting and giving them the opportunity to gain confidence. For example, in social media, take it for granted that, you know, it's just, it's just Facebook, so let's just post. But putting it together on what what buttons to push to set things up. Because quite frankly, we as small business owners, we have to work our way up to hiring help. Um, so a lot of times we can't go right out of the gate being able to hire a team of folks to help us. So we have to strategize and prioritize what needs to come first. And let's take, for example, social media. It's just nice if you need to overcome technology. The first step is to work in it and work with it on a consistent basis so that you can gain confidence. And I have worked with individuals on setting up a Facebook page because I've had many folks that someone else has set up their Facebook page for their business and then they're left with they don't know how to use it. They don't know what to post. They don't know how to develop a strategy for for that. And so they're they're letting their fear of not knowing the screens and not knowing what buttons to push, their fear and lack of confidence stop them from getting started. Well, in my conversations uh, with with some folks that have technophobia, um, they they just say, well, I just really should do this, but, you know, I don't know how to use the computer. And the ones that really 
want to take control and and really figure it out, they will seek help to basically hold their hand so that they can gain the confidence. And I believe that once you know the gist of how to do it, and you may learn, for example, how to do your Facebook post, and you gain a strategy, but you quickly realize, hey, you don't have enough time to do the consistent posts, you're going to delegate that. But it feels so much better that by the time you're ready to delegate, you have enough confidence of how the system works that you can manage it better. Now, for folks who convince themselves that they aren't good with technology, have created an excuse of letting the start stop them. So are you one of those individuals? Really, really take a look and see if, if the technology is what's stopping you. And is, is that the excuse that you're having? Because if you really want to accomplish more, if you really want to move ahead, and if you really want to do that one task and it involves technology, don't let the technology stop you. I work with many individuals helping them get over the hump of their technology obstacles. And not that they will become whizzes and not that they'll always that they'll like it, but they recognize that they must do a certain amount themselves until they can afford someone to help. And some tasks, my team of virtual assistants and I do for them, but for practical purposes, they must do some things themselves until they can get ready to afford to delegate more. So don't let the start stop you. I want to turn my focus on Folks that seem to be serial program purchasers. Do you know those individuals, you know, that they're always buying books or they're always listening to podcasts and attending webinars and seminars and buying another program and a six-step this and a seven-step that, downloading tons of, of free information. Now, I have to back up a little bit. I'm all about lifelong learning, and I do those things. I, I purchase books. I listen to podcasts. I attend webinars. I attend seminars. But there's only so many that you can listen to, that you can read, that, you know, you can focus on. And I know individuals that, that are always purchasing and kind of getting started, maybe not even even doing the program. But let's say that they, they do the program, but they don't implement. Now, when you self-educate, it's a way to open up your mind and your world. So I don't discourage that at all. In fact, you need to have something daily that inspires you, that educates you, that get your your mind going because you know we as entrepreneurs we are, have to be self-motivating and and sometimes those folks that are directly around us aren't able to give us the inspiration or the um, education that we need so the internet is fabulous to to gain that and that's why you know, we should use it for. And also, going to seminars or attending webinars, you're not only getting the education, but you're you're networking. Whether you're networking digitally or in person, you're networking to be with like-minded individuals. So, it's great because you gain ideas that you can implement to improve your business and your life. And it's important to be always in learning mode. But what I see in some individuals is they purchase program after program after program 
and they don't spend any time implementing. In fact, sometimes they, you know, they'll spill out what these types of things you should be doing or what they want to do, but they never, ever implement. And in order for a program to work, you have to do the work. And much of the time, we just fall back into our old habits. But then again, they do continue to look for the best, next best thing and letting the, the start stop them. I don't know. Are you someone that just searching for that one thing to just overnight make it work? And it just doesn't happen that way. So I like to focus on one thing at a time. I have my key programs or the key people that I follow and and read and I have a focus for the year and that helps me stay motivated and implement what I want to implement. Now sometimes we avoid starting something because we simply don't have the desire and even though it's something we must do. I know a lot of people that don't like to do bookkeeping. I don't like to do bookkeeping. I know several business owners that avoid it because when you start out, the books look miserable. <laughs> and and so why even put yourself through that? So then they don't track their expenses. They don't do good bookkeeping. And um, so you never know how the reporting is and you never know where you started to where you're going and you can't plan making processes and starting processes to get those things that must be done because it's going to help you but you have no desire and that's a big hump to do even our health for example It's important to feel good and be healthy. There's no doubt about it. And we are much more productive when we feel good and healthy. So why do many of us slip into the spiral of eating junk and gaining weight and feeling sluggish? Well, it's easier, quite frankly. But since starting my business, I know that I've been sitting in front of my computer more than ever. I would be obsessed. It's almost like working 24-7. And when I'm not in front of my computer, I'm traveling. Well, and the kind of travel that my husband and I do involves a lot of sitting. So we like to, to have a lot of windshield time. And we love traveling back roads and taking our time to our destination. So we sit a lot. Now needless to say, In the last several years, my husband and I have slowly inched our way up a few pant sizes. And we don't feel bad. We just feel frumpy. And we certainly don't want to acquire any health issues. Yet, without those health issues, we aren't really motivated to do anything about our creeping weight gain. There's just not the pressing issue. And it's terrible. It's just terrible to wait until something is truly wrong before we change habits. And so over the last two years, my husband and I would tell each other that we need to do this or we need to do that. Well, that didn't work. We'd always just say, well, we'll start that tomorrow. There's just no motivation there. We had no desire. So we're letting the start stop us. So, of course, like most people, we want instant results and hate to work for any lifestyle change. I mean, that kind of goes for owning a business. You You want to be instantly successful. And who wants to work for that? (laughs) But um, it doesn't happen that way. Changing the way your body feels and the way your body looks takes work. And there's no instant results. And eating habits are certainly a lifestyle, and to change those takes time. 
So I don't, I don't want to diet and neither does my husband. And, and so what we did was decide to choose that one thing, just one thing that we could do and start that new habit. So we decided to reduce our gluten intake. Not that we're fanatical about being gluten-free. Now, our philosophy um, is being gluten-less, you know, having less gluten, and that guides our food choices. And we aren't allergic to gluten, so it's not a health risk or anything. We have just decided to go gluten-less. So we began this habit, and... Getting into that habit has really helped us. I make sure that I get away from the computer now and get up out of the house and do some sort of exercise or walking or or what have you. Get outside. And we are making better food choices. And lo and behold, our clothes are fitting better. In fact, they're kind of too loose and we just feel better and we we started with one thing to give us momentum and instead of looking at the the end result of an end goal we came back and said what's this one thing can we get started and let let's focus on that and let's make that a habit and we've seen a big difference now that we're motivated to keep things going in the right direction. And I've started educating myself more on food and nutrition. And I am tracking things more and just changing little by little my lifestyle, not completely depriving myself because that never works, um, especially in diets. So it's, it's just the little things. And Thinking moderation and, you know, the the best thing to do to lose weight is, and to feel better is to eat less and move more. So that that's what we're trying to do. But it took us years, years to get started because we just didn't want to do it. Sometimes it takes doing one little thing to get you started in the right direction of obtaining your big goal. There are going to be bumps in the road, but you must go back to your why. Goals are nothing unless you continually go back to refer to your why. Why do you want to do it in the first place? Why did I want to start my business? I wanted to help some other small businesses. I wanted to be able to, to help them grow and to prosper by by working behind the scenes and, and being their virtual assistant and giving them more hands and taking away some overwhelm. And that will give them the momentum of, of growing their, their business further. I wanted to um, create a business where I could work from anywhere. As long as I had internet and a telephone, I wanted to be able to have a lifestyle of travel. And so I wanted to live small and live in a small space. So I, I started with one thing and the momentum had, had come. I wanted to have more energy and be able to um, accomplish more and be healthy because I don't want to feel sluggish or have my bones ache and and just not feel good. So started with one thing, gluten-free. And the reason why, I have to refer to that because sometimes in order to make the right choices, you have to go back to your why. To accomplish more, you can't let the start stop you. You've got this. Just remember to push through Get practice at whatever you want to start, and this will give you confidence. Focus on one thing to start. Once you get some some momentum and progress, making it a habit 
making your foundation stronger, then move on to the next thing that you're letting the start stop you. How about you? Do you have something that you're letting the starting stop you? Be sure to comment or email me at podcast at scrivenersolutions.com. That's podcast at S-C-R-I-V-E-N-E-R solutions.com. I'd love to hear from you. I appreciate you tuning in to our very first episode. And until next time, this is Gayla Scrivener wishing you a fantastic week.